the all-new generation of the Audi A6. Today in our exclusive preview on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. We're going to take a detailed look on the exterior here in the S-Line today, tell you everything what has changed, how is it different to the A7 and the A8, the interior of course, well, no driving experience yet, but we will talk about the engine and about the technologies that are new inside here. Everything of that in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! This is the new face of the A6 and it is a pretty strong one. Interesting that, you know, from those siblings, the other big Audi sedans from the A7 and the A8, this one here basically sits in between. The A7 has the sportiest look and also the widest front grille. The A8 has the highest front grille and this one again sits somewhat in between elegance and sportiness, so they try to combine both. This one here, there are different trims available as a sport line and design line and the sportiest is the S line package. Here for example with those double lower bumpers, stronger air intake graphics and what's interesting depending on the engine, they have different air intakes in the front grille. You cannot really see it that well but they do not work like BMW with adaptive ones. They try to make it a little bit easier to let either some air coolant inside or keep it outside for a better wind, wind coefficient. So um, interesting solutions for different engines as well. All headlamps come with LED technology, but three different trims and the top trim one we can see here. And wow, this is also this light signature play. It happens when you open or close the vehicle. The LED daytime running light signature is somewhat the same for all the three different trims, but this one here, this cascading uh, orchestra is reserved for the top trim LED. 4 meters 93 or 16 foot 2 is the total length of this vehicle and the dimensions haven't changed that much, just a little notch here and there. Overall the car looks sportier than before, of course even more stressed with the S-Line package here with the according badge. Interesting is what we have seen here in the side profile from design lines. Here the main dropping line dividing light and shadow and here another one in the lower part. Also this one here at the height of the door handles. Rims start with 17 inch and go up to this one here 21 inch. This is really massive and well those Pirelli tires have this overlapping lip that protect the rims a little bit against scratches but of course, if you want to have your life a little bit easier, then you go for some smaller rims, so they are a little bit more protective than overall. Then towards the rear, this one here is the classic sedan. It will, of course, always be available as an estate later too, at least in the European markets. Otherwise, this one here, a worldwide sold car. And you can see that, especially in the rear part, the shoulders are stronger now, especially above the wheel arches. and. Even more interesting, if you look at the very rear part, this one from the side profile looks rather straight. Whereas the A7 rather goes like this and the A8 rather like this. So again, it's basically a mix or in between the A8 and the A7. And now to the rear, which is characterized by this horizontal chrome fin that goes all the way through the rear. Then also this tech look LED taillight signature that comes with every Audi A6. Mm. Soon I will show you what's the uh, welcoming signature, the animated one. What else is there to say to the rear? Well, in the lower part, this one is the S line again, as I said earlier, this kind of diffuser style and those ones are the fake exhaust tips. And why are manufacturers doing that? Well, they can keep the same graphic no matter which engine is in the front that is basically the reason. And what you cannot see here, 
adapters at the rear axle, also interesting technology, optional as in the Audi A8, the rear axle steering, which goes five degrees across when you're driving slow and two degrees parallel to the front wheels when you're driving faster. Especially at lower speeds, it reduces the turning circle, for example, uh, about one meters. So that makes a rather big car more flexible, easier to ride also in the city. And let's see about the signature when we open and close the car. And here we go with the signature for the rear lights. What do you think? Talking about the engines, well, what is interesting, all come with automatic transmission. And the reason for that is because this car has so many assistance systems, optional, there are three different packages. If you pick all of them, there are 38 assistance systems. Basically the same, they are also available for the Audi A8. And either the dual clutch transmission, the S-Tronic, or the Tiptronic, the converter automatic gearbox. Then for the big diesel, like the one we have today. Starting with the petrol engine, this is a 3 liter V6 with 340 horsepower. Then moving to the diesel side, the one we have here, the V6 TDI. This one available in different horsepower trims, 286 horsepower or 231. And then there's also a smaller diesel, a 2 liter TDI with just around 200 horsepower, 204 in Germany to be exact. That one then with front wheel drive, all the others come with all wheel drive. Then what else is interesting? Well, this 48 volt board net technology that comes for the bigger engines that is um, to actually power up all those assistance systems. And the smaller, the two liter TDI comes with the derivation of that one, um, not with 48 volt board net, but with a similar system still to be able to power all the stuff that is basically a driving computer nowadays. So one goal of all the efforts is to include a mild hybrid system. That means with the bigger engine, there's even a lithium ion battery in the rear. And that one then supports the sailing or coasting function between a speed of 55 kilometers and 160 kilometers an hour, that the car can basically roll, run freely without using any fuel. And also supporting the start-stop system when you're facing a traffic light. So that one shall be actually improved here to reduce more fuel consumption. And on the sporty side then, you have different suspensions available, a base suspension, then two sport suspension, a normal one and an adaptive one. That one also comes closer to the comfort side then already. And as a final top trim, the optional air suspension. So overall four suspension types you can pick for this vehicle. This would be your car key. Of course, keyless entry also available. And what is interesting here is that we have the soft close option, not base, but here you can see, ah, magic. Um, definitely an uh, upper segment feature already available here. Then first look at the new interior. We have a lot of rather clean and elegant shapes and lines, that is clear. The seats, though, are, those are the multi-contour seats, four different seat forms, base, a sport seat, um, a super sport seat, and this one here, the multi-contour seat, so different seat forms available. Then again, different seat surfaces, but it depends on the market. In Germany, for example, you also get a, a fabric base, total fabric seat. Uh, in the US, probably you also get a leatherette seat, and here what we see today is the full animal skin spec, which they still emphasize a lot, sadly. High craftsmanship we can find already at the inside of the doors with design lines and also each single button has a clicking sound and is really perfectly executed. That's, you know, the, the main feature when you buy such an expensive Audi. Then we can find this is a matte wood inlet, so it also feels really natural. I really like that. So you can get different decor elements, aluminum, just dark one, um, later also carbon fiber. But this one here, the wood also fits this very segment. And now let's get inside. I will close the door with the soft close. Here we go. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it's a general sedan seating position, 
still pretty low and it feels somewhat sporty. The seat is from the form, really good, offers you great comfort. I'm very sure that the base seat will also do just fine, by the way. Headroom-wise, this one here is without panoramic roof and there's uh, plenty of headroom left. I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1, if you don't know so far. There will also be a panoramic roof, which is way wider than the one that was offered in the previous generation. The seat control is all electric here in all different ways you can imagine. And there's also a seat massage. You can activate it with a small button left to the seat. And it also goes up to the shoulder area. The steering wheel can be adjusted in a manual way. It takes some power in certain ways, but overall um, you have a lot of flexibility. Look at the reach. You can, um, you can really set it up for any size of driver, basically. Interesting also from this optional Bang & Olufsen sound system here, where the part of the elements go right up. I still know that from, from a previous generation Audi A8, for example. And then also when you shut it off and open the door again, they disappear. Pretty spectacular effect interior overview with a lot of clean and string design lines. The matte wood cover, very wide use also on the top of the central screen. And you can see this two screen setup we also know from the A8 or A7. So there's an 8.6 in the lower part and 10.1 inch in the top part with the MMI Navigation Plus combined also and with digital instruments. The lower one is always the same size. The upper part is in the base model 8 point something inch, so a little bit smaller than. Soon more details to those. Interesting how it becomes a little bit slimmer here on the right side. The Quattro logo is also illuminated. So uh, this LED lighting package continues also in the very big middle console. And the steering wheel also mirrors the single frame grille of the exterior again. Then some shiny black elements left and right, and well, it has actually, um, you know, not a small, not a big. It's, uh, I think, just the right size for this vehicle, and promises, due to a very slim, already some sporty driving fun. So to the infotainment screens, this is the basic home screen. You can connect your phone via Bluetooth, but also the smartphone mirroring function is available. When you click those pads, by the way, you get an acoustic and also a haptical feedback. You really feel it a little bit. This is the GPS. By the way, here in the GPS view on the camera, it seems to flicker a little bit, but that's just on camera, not in real life. For your personal eyes, it's all smooth and not flickering the screen. Pretty detailed. And that's the reason why it sometimes also takes some more time to load stuff. But overall, pretty good good also with the you know with a big format but the smaller gps will of course also serve its purpose basically if we go back to the lower screen then first of all the standard one is the temperature we can set like this and also here the acoustic and haptical feedback also optional a cool seat is available you can also hear that probably and this is a pretty massive one, but if you just pick fabric seats, for example, or Alcantara on the inside, probably you will not need it. What is interesting that on the lower part, you can also have the drive select, but then it appears on the upper screen. And that is one function that is then correlating a little bit here with the optional air suspension, raising the suspension or lowering it again. Also, when you are in the GPS menu and want to enter an address, for example, search here. So then the lower screen changes and you can, for example, write in here, when I want to go to Berlin, for example, for example here, well, it already appears, yeah. but I can <laughs> go back again. So on the, I write an E and an R, so on, but Berlin already appears. So this is one, one element, another one, where those two displays are playing together and the lower one changes accordingly. And last but not least, the rear camera, or also this one, normal rear camera here in the studio, fake drone view from above, or this 3D view. And this is a pretty amazing. Uh, you can see it right here. You can even zoom in and out and really take a look around your alloys. Here's another photo assistant. Thank you for your work today also. 
<laughs> it's really funny and impressive. For example, if you're facing a pavement or something like that, then you can see how do I damage my alloys or not. And um, this is, of course, all artificially done, but from the surrounding cameras. 12.3 inch for the digital cockpit. If you start with the analog gauges, you can do that as well. Then you have a middle screen where you can, for example, have those traffic sign information and stuff. Here with the all digital cockpit, you can change around your views, whatever you want to see. For example, also, let's see, oh, there was a night vision. <laughs> but then, yeah, the GPS here, either that way, or you can have it on full scale. That's, you know, good good thing that you can really see where you're going and don't have to uh, put all your vision to the right side, to the center of the infotainment screen, but it's also running. And you can also order a head-up display, for example, with information with a loud speed, your current speed, or also information from the adaptive cruise control. Very well also integrated this middle console again with the matte wood, very natural feeling. So I think I would really go for, for this deco. Maybe if there's also a bright one available, that would also be nice. The automatic shifter right here. This is then again for this big diesel, the converter automatic gearbox, electric handbrake. For the cup holders, they're hidden right here. Also space for the key. And the cup holes are also adaptive. And interesting information for our American viewers in the US, the cup holders will be a little bit bigger. This one here, by the way, um, sometimes when you do it just slightly, it doesn't close, but you have to put some pressure here. Then middle armrest, so fixedly attached, you cannot move it to the sides. This is also a sign of build quality here. And then a QI symbol, so you can wireless charge your phone or also with two USB ports. By the way, also NFC ready. You can also open and close the car with your phone if you like, and also adapt it then to different customers using the car, up to eight different people for seat settings and whatever. And now to the rear compartment. So due to the longer wheelbase, there is no more room on the interior in general in length and also a little bit more for the shoulders front and the back seats and you can see here with 1 meter 86 or 6 foot 1 just to repeat it again still got some more knee room left um, still when i am driving as a tall driver however this is general a weakness of the upper mid-size segment those cars are five meters or 16 foot something long but still have the same knee room than maybe something two or three, even three segments below from cars that very well use it. So this is rather a problem, not of the A6, but in general of the whole segment of this rather conservative building form of those very vehicles. Then you also sit rather, you know, um, in a lying back position. It's a classic sedan sitting position in the rear. It is somewhat comfortable. The rear bench is not the longest than the headroom still plenty of room left um, this could be reduced with a panoramic roof maybe but in general what they did is they gained some more space especially here so um, also for a sedan this is really perfectly fine here in the rear in the estate it will be a little bit more roomy in the rear but you can see here you have to be really tall to hit that ceiling then some more interesting details also at the inside of the doors in the rear we have the wood inlay so again perfect from the build quality also then this luxury feeling on the rear bench what else well there's this armrest it fold down then there's a two cup holders right there also adaptive you can also fold the seats from here it's a one third two third split Works like this. This one then would be two thirds. I will show it again from the trunk. ESO fix for the child seats on the outer seats, and there it is. Here it is with covers right and left. And finally, there's also a climate unit option again, a four zone AC where you can set the temperature, also the strength of the vents. Below that, three and four. USB supports overall then, so two more here in the rear. I think it's quite funny that they also put a print in number to the USB ports and you really know that you have four in total. And a 12 volt power supply again, interesting with the metal knurling around that one. And one of my favorite features is when you use the seatbelt, 
You can even better see that when it's dark, so we also have a shot there for you. Around the seat belt holders, there's an illumination, also in the close-up, really well done for all the seat belt holders. That looks fancy and it's really helpful because so often people, especially in the rear, search for those seat belt holders. Oh, where can I find it? Well, you can't miss them right here. And I would also enjoy the sound system from the rear here because the optional spec has so many speakers also in the ceiling hidden here. And I tested it earlier. It has a really very clear sound. So for music lovers, definitely worth the option. And now let's open the boot area like this. It folds open. And, well, 530 liters. Of course, limited with the sedan. The estate later on will give you more flexibility. But it's actually quite wide and very long. Below this one here you have some tire repair kit and maximum, here we are, it's the one third and then I have to go around because you cannot do it from the rear of the trunk actually. So when you <laughs> take some time, especially in studio, so there it is. And you see it's almost flat, it raises a little bit, you can also put up the head restraints and then it goes down a little bit further and you can also unlock a ski hatch that is possible too that you just have the middle part folded and now to our conclusion for today the all new audi a6 well first of all in design it is somewhat an evolution but we have a lot of sporty elements especially here in the s line so it has a sporty but elegant appearance well those 21 inch almost eat the car alive i would surely also be happy with 19 or 20 inch of course, I would like to hear your opinion. Of course, Audi still sets the line to be not too dramatic in the exterior design. Um, but no, I think it's good that you can really pick from the different brands that they also differentiate each other. Then the interior. I think this is actually one of the key elements of this vehicle. The perfect build quality, that's for sure. Also with the new design with the two screens, uh, you can say it's maybe a little bit of technical uh, overload, so um, you have to get used to it just a little bit. But since I knew it already now from the Audi A8, you have to see that when you get to into the vehicle for a second time, it's already getting better and you can very well know how to use the different functions. It offers a lot of comfort, that's for sure, and also a little bit more room than the previous generation. That's also a new change. What's really new are a lot of technologies like the rear axle steering, the mild hybrid system, which is um, you know for, for a little bit of fuel saving. It won't be a super game changer. That one will probably be then the plug-in, the real plug-in hybrid that will come at a later stage, not with the entry of this, uh, this model. And um, then it can be useful when you can charge at work or at home, for example. But so far, more of those um, traditional drivetrains are being used. Later on, then again, of course, the estate version. Well, in driving-wise, it promises to be even a little bit sportier, with the rear axle also more agile inside the city. That one will also be very important. And uh, we will also test the different suspension, hopefully, at a later stage. So stay tuned when we drive this vehicle. And also compare our extensive Audi A8 documentary and also the A7 driving review. And I already want to know from you which one of those three big new Audis is your favorite one. State it in the comments and also tune in next time to Article Fuel. Thank you so much for tuning in.